Facebook, we're going to record. All right. So if we start here, okay, here is just a, uh, a copy of bumpers on uh, Word. Cool. And I'll, uh, I'll hit the chat and the Q&A after. Uh, so you might recognize this, right? This is going to be right about page uh, 13, 14 of bumpers where we talk about success. This is where I want to start. There's a lot of uh, esoteric stuff here. Um, obviously, I talk a lot about minding the gap. So these notes right here are already in the bumper accelerator. So if you're an accelerator member, you could drop, drop in there. Um, if you're not, you go to nickpeterson.com backslash gap. Make sure you watch that video because it covers the, uh, the initial component of like, how do I actually take action? Okay. And then we get into success. What does success look like? And we have this exercise writing out your perfect day. This is really, really important for a few reasons. I'm going to explain why it's important to do this. It's also really important that we don't marry ourselves to this, which may seem counterintuitive, okay? But we have to set this, and then we have to re-examine it. <clears throat> okay, so that's one of the reasons I almost didn't write the book is because this very exercise, of a goal-setting exercise, could be the most dangerous thing a person does. Now, if that sounds weird, you, you can drop it in the comments. Let me know. Hey, that sounds strange. A goal-setting exercise is potentially the most dangerous thing a person can do. If that's uh, counterintuitive, I will explain what I mean by that. Okay? So, let's talk about understanding success. Again, nickpeterson.com backslash gap for foundational stuff if you are not an Accelerator member. So, let's talk about understanding success here. Okay, that's really the goal, is just uh, understand what success is to us. Okay. So the overview and foundation, as I said, nickpeterson.com backslash gap. It's just a quick video breaking down the priority pyramid and <clears throat> why most people never actually get where they want to go. Uh, but it kind of starts with knowing where you want to go. All right. So real quick, I'm going to talk about circumnavigation. It's really important that we understand that we're circumnavigating creatures, which is why one goal will never be appropriate for any one person. At any, it may be at a particular time, but not always. Okay, I'm going to explain that to you because it's really, really, really important. Uh, beliefs are a choice. They're always a choice. Uh, it may, again sound counterintuitive, but we adopt beliefs as a choice. We can always choose to believe something different. It doesn't mean we should believe something different. Uh, it just simply means that beliefs are a choice. Okay. Which about names versus titles? Names versus titles. This is uh, the difference between being backward looking and being forward looking. This is the difference between being a miserable curmudgeon and being happy. All right, so we're talking about names versus titles. And I'm going to breeze through this real quick. And then we're going to do the exercise, what does success look like now that we understand these fundamental concepts of human nature. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the chat that that makes sense and you're ready to roll. Circumnavigation. You see my business partner, Dan, up in the corner because I was too lazy to change the slide. Circumnavigation. Okay. Circumnavigation, I'm going to show this to you. This is how humans operate. Let me know that you can see my, uh, see my screen here and that it does indeed say circumnavigation on the top. Cool. So this is, the, this is the importance and the danger of goal setting. If this is us, okay, so here, here's us, and we want to do something other than like lay around and be useless, we have to set our sight on something, okay? We are circumnavigating creatures. We are seeking creatures, which means in order to figure out what we want to do, we have to start in some direction. We have to pick something. That's why goals are important. Now, what we do, 
technology actually does the same things. We circumnavigate. So in any, any aspect of our life, we're going to start something and we're going to go the wrong way. And hopefully we recognize that we're doing the wrong thing and we correct. We often always overcorrect. Okay. So this is how wrong we were the first time. And then we over rotated the other way. Right. And the hope is we, we overcorrect again, but not as bad, right? We don't overcorrect as aggressively. And it kind of looks like this. Does that make sense? So if this is us and this is the goal, it should look like that. A series of overcorrections trying to go in the right way. Okay, so a lot of what our bumpers, when we talk about bumpers, is we're set a bumper there. Right? And then we over-rotate, we set a bumper here, and then we over-rotate again, but we recognize it sooner, so we set a bumper here, and eventually our bumpers can lead us directly to our goal much faster. Does that, does that make sense, the over-rotation and the circumnavigation? Uh, this looks a lot of different ways. Maybe we own a, maybe we're a salesperson. Let's talk about a salesperson. Maybe we're a salesperson, or a business owner, or we're a parent. Okay, and we really want to get somewhere and we realize we're not getting closer to our goal because we're way too passive. Right? This is the most common. It's, it's an undulation between order and chaos. Or, uh, so we're too passive. We say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done being passive. And we over-rotate. We become way more of an a-hole than we ever really want to be. We have to recognize that and we over-rotate again and we fall back into our own patterns and there we are, we're still too passive, but we're not as passive as we were before, which allows us to move closer to the destination, right? And then somebody, mindset coach, or somebody says, hey, you need to be more aggressive. So we become more aggressive, and, um, but not as aggressive before because we set the bumper. We recognize it now, and that's the process, okay? So humans circumnavigate, which means it's okay to run into the same problems over and over and over. Let me show you what that looks like. Let's think of our goals as ascension. We're moving up, right? So circumnavigation now looks like this, right? All we did was we took the same concept of circumnavigation and we just made it so we're moving vertical, improving. Now, uh, rigidity and chaos are the two most common conflicts. Too rigid, too chaotic. Too rigid, too chaotic. Okay, so let's say this is rigidity and this is chaos. It could be uh, this is uh, confidence and this is lack of confidence. Okay, now what happens is we move up vertical. All right, notice this. We have way too much confidence. We become a little more humble. So that allows us to move up. We move up and we become a little overconfident again, right? So we run into the same problems, but they're at a higher level. So anybody says you shouldn't run into the same problems again doesn't understand how humans operate. The thing is, we want to run into the same problems at a higher level. And we know that because we can look down and say, hey, We've been through this before. So circumnavigation appropriate looks more like a spiral staircase. Uh, some people say, oh, that person spirals. They're spiraling. It means they are very aggressively moving upward or downward in a particular domain. Okay. Does that make sense? All that to say, it's part of the elimination of guilt and shame. Even up here, you're going to run into the same problems that your unique disposition is prone to. People have, some people have a propensity to be super shy. Okay, at this level, they're going to be super shy, not as shy as they were before, but they're, they're, they're doing it from a different level. Okay. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments. So that is circumnavigation. We have to understand that we are supposed to over-rotate. What we do is we over-rotate and we set our bumpers so we never over-rotate that far again. And then we over-rotate the other way and we set our bumpers so that we never over-rotate that far again. And you can see 
this process gets us to where we want to be with a lot less detours. And it's going to happen because your unique disposition, you have a propensity, whatever it is, to over rotate a certain way. And then because you are so upset or so determined to be the opposite, you over rotate the other way. And it's always going to happen. Cool. Cool. So that is circumnavigation. Now, it's important to know that because we cannot begin this process of spiraling and getting to a higher level if we don't have a goal. However, however, that goal could be the most dangerous thing we've ever done if we're not aware of what we're about to talk about. Okay, so that's circumnavigation. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the risk we run when we circumnavigate is that we pick a goal and we start to identify with that goal. We start developing beliefs that are aligned with that goal, okay? which is appropriate for the time being. However, we must never forget that we chose those beliefs. It may be out of necessity, but we must never forget that we have the freedom to walk off that field of play at any point. Okay, what I mean by that is maybe you're in medical school and you're three months away from getting your medical degree and you're miserable, you hate it, you don't want to be a doctor. You have the freedom to adopt a set of beliefs that allows you to just quit, right? Strange, uh, but we develop these beliefs so that we have our competitive edge. Okay. NFL player, right? A lot of NFL players will pretend like every single game is do or die. Every single game is a must-win game their life depends on. That's not true. They could just walk off the field of play. They could just get in their car and drive home. However, they momentarily develop a set of beliefs so that they uh, keep their competitive edge. Right? So we do this all the time, especially super competitive people. We develop beliefs that tell us there is no choice but to do this so that we actually do it. That can be healthy. I'll give you an example of it being healthy. We choose to be a mother or a father. We could choose to be a stepfather. I can choose to marry somebody that has a daughter, right? Then... It would behoove me, let's say the kid is, I don't know, a month old or we're newborn. It makes sense to develop a set of beliefs that you cannot just walk away from your child. Technically, you could, but we develop these beliefs so that we can identify with a good caregiver and um, our actions will be aligned with being the best mother or father or whatever. You have to play all in. Now, again, that was an adopted belief. We understand, right? Hopefully we understand, or maybe we know people that have a 35 year old kid and they've never revisited their belief or their identity as a caregiving mother. So their 35 year old kid is walking all over them and they still feel like it is their job to be a caregiver. So they had a goal was to be a mother. They developed a set of beliefs that made them a good mother never re-examined that goal or those beliefs, which are no longer appropriate for her quality of life. Does that make sense? Drop a comment, let me know. I wanna make sure I'm not losing anybody. Um, so we do develop these beliefs in order to modify our own behavior to get what we want. What we don't do often enough is re-examine our goal. Okay. Cool. So we don't re-examine our goal. These are the things I think about. I'm looking at the comments. These are the things that I'm, I'm working on, really trying to understand why humans act the way they do. Uh, so we need to recognize that we've chosen these beliefs. Okay. A, somebody that plays a long game like myself, I operate off a lot of beliefs. I tell people all the time, I know I'm playing psychological games with myself and it stresses them out. But the truth is, we all are. It's only the ones that recognize that I am and you are and everybody around me is 
but have the freedom to change what they consider the reality. Okay, so the choice of belief, which is why I don't want you to write down what success looks like and then never revisit it because you will end up being the, you know, mother with a 35 year old kid that still thinks their goal is to be a great mother. It's not appropriate. Or the doctor who wants a completely different life, but is stuck to the fact that they want to be a doctor because they can't do what they want to do and maintain their medical license, right? That is all a belief and anybody, I'm not saying it's appropriate, but anybody at any time in their life can just walk off the field. Never forget that. Never forget that because you're circumnavigating within these bumpers and these bumpers are somewhat restrictive to get you to where you want to be. You better make damn sure it's actually where you want to be. Okay. Can't win a race you don't want to be in, says Jeff, quoting me. All right. So that's the choice of belief. Okay. We have to recognize these. Everybody's operating this way. Most people have forgotten that it was a choice to believe. In fact, anybody that says, well, I believe in the constitution or I believe in aliens or I believe, uh, you can't, you can't know that you believe and actually have the belief. It's very, very strange, but it's kind of like saying, um, I believe that trees are made out of wood. Like I don't have to say that because it's just kind of a given, right? So the more somebody says they believe that the words, they actually say the words are on a certain topic, the more they are trying to tell them a story to maintain their own beliefs or argue with somebody else, which is never fruitful. Okay, so let's talk about names and titles, names and titles. I talk a lot about the short game and the long game. And this is really, really important. This is process versus um, goal. Okay, names versus titles. One is forward looking and present. The other is backward looking and reliving a miserable past. So what I mean by that <clears throat> is if your goal is to be a doctor or your goal is to be a mother or your goal is to be a teacher, you need to get clear on if you, Jeff, Steph, Manoj, Jason, uh, if you want to be a teacher so that you can wake up and teach every day. If you want to be a doctor so you can wake up and doctor every day, if you want to be a business owner so you can wake up and grow your business every day, or if you just want the title. Because the title, when somebody says, especially when they introduce themselves, when they say, hey, Manoj, I'm a doctor. They are living in the past. They are saying, you should know me, like me, trust me, uh, participate in this engagement with me because of something I did 30 years ago. I got this piece of paper 30 years ago. Uh, that's what we want to avoid. If we're chasing titles, we are going to spend, we're going to get the title and we're going to spend the rest of our life living in the past, pointing to that trophy we got six years ago. So we want to think of goals that are, or outcomes that are name oriented. Hey, I'm Nick Peterson. I don't need to tell you what I've done. I don't need to tell you about my trophies. I am just here to live my best life today, right now with you in your presence. Okay, so names versus titles. One is a short game, one is a long game. The short game being, you know, I won a Super Bowl five years ago. Like, cool. A lot of people that won a Super Bowl in the past are like broke and homeless and alcoholics. It doesn't say anything about their quality of life right now. So think about the short game versus the long game when you're talking about ideal life. So when you wake, when you say, okay, what does success look like to me? Well, I wake up at, I don't know, 7 a.m. and I walk out on the beach and I'm a doctor. Uh, that is not going to bring you a lot of joy long term. Okay. But if you say I wake up and then I go in to my work, which is a hospital, and I get to just spend all day making people feel better. That's a name goal. That's a long game, right? So we might have to get our medical degree in order to do that. 
uh, but we don't want to get the medical medical degree to get the medical degree. And I, I go to that a lot because I'm a, um, I have a lot of clients that are doctors, physicians. Most of them are realizing they never wanted to be a doctor. They wanted to get a medical degree. Okay, so it's name versus titles. Name versus titles. It's also why I don't have to uh, Jeff's chagrin. I don't have a compelling introduction. I don't have an elevator pitch. I don't tell a lot of my story, which a lot of, you know, Jeff will sit here and pull the story out of me um, because that's all in the past. That has nothing to do with right now the conversation that we can have um, and stay engaged because the only question that we should ever ask when we're defining success is, is this something I want to continue to do? That's it. Okay, so names is a mindset of let's do this thing to decide if I want to continue to do it. Titles is the mindset of I'm going to get this trophy. What we don't realize is that then we're going to have that trophy and uh, now what? Right? So names versus title. I strongly suggest you think more. Uh, Steph, you think, what does Steph want to do every day? Who do I want to become? What do I want to wake up and live? How do I want to live my life? Not, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to, I'm going to get a Nobel prize. None of that matters. None of that matters in quality of life. Now, if you happen to just love waking up and doing science and that wins you a Nobel prize, awesome. As long as you get to wake up and do what you want to do every day, uh, you are successful. Okay. So those are the frameworks I wanted to give you before we dive into the obvious defining success. How do I know when I'm successful? And the quote that I have in the book is from Earl Nightingale. And it says, success is really nothing more than the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. This means that any person who knows what, what they're doing and where they're going is a success. Any person with a goal towards which they are working is a successful person. So in our circumnavigation, as long as we are getting closer to the thing that we actually want, we are successful. The mistake is we often don't know what we want or we make the decision when we're like 19 years old when our prefrontal cortex is not even close to being fully developed. And then we develop these beliefs that I talked about before and we don't realize we adopted those beliefs by choice in order to get to the thing we think we wanted. We no longer want that thing, so we must readopt a new set of beliefs. There is circumnavigation on every single level, right? So we zoom out and we, we said, hey, we over-rotated on what we thought we wanted. Hey, so here's what I want you to do. do, do, do. Here's what I want you to do. Fill out the sheet. This is in the accelerator, this sheet right here. And write out your perfect day from wake up till time you go to bed. Not titles, not what's going to happen. You say, you wake up tomorrow and have a perfect day. What are you doing? What are you doing during that day? I don't care if you have a title. I don't care if you're in a hut. I don't care if you're in a mansion. None of that matters. What is a perfect day for you? Okay. So write that down and then put it into a sentence. I know I am successful when I am waking up every single morning and this is what my day looks like. Okay. And then print it off and tear it out. And then what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to give you some circumnavigation tools here. I say, okay, I know I'm successful when I get, you know, I leave work at three and I'm home by three 30 so I can, uh, and then I play with my kids and then we have dinner together. Just an example. So every time something comes up, every single time something comes up, we ask ourselves, okay, my perfect day, I'm home by 3.30 p.m. I don't care if Elon Musk or somebody famous says, hey, let's do this partnership together. You need to ask yourself, will I be home by 3.30 p.m. every day? I don't care how much money is involved. I don't care how much fame or fortune. 
because none of those were not on your perfect day. Being home by 3.30 p.m. to have dinner with your family was on your perfect day. And so that's part of the circumnavigation is saying no to things that push you outside of your bumpers. Okay. Alternatively, you could re-examine what really matters to you. If you're not willing to put, it's a gut check, if you're not willing to put those bumpers up because you actually rather go hang out with Elon Musk than have dinner with your kids, you need to know that. No judgment. Sometimes we write down the thing we think we're supposed to say. Bumpers, circumnavigation is a process of gut checking yourself repeatedly. I said I care about this. You might have thought you were supposed to say that. Maybe you want to believe that. Maybe you want to care about that. Uh, but you have to know. And without these bumpers, without the little like, you know, the game operation when you hit the side and it buzzes at you, uh, you have to have your own little buzzers that say, whoa, I have this hard bumper and it doesn't make sense because I actually rather spend time with Elon Musk. Um, that's a time to re-examine your beliefs. Yep. This is not about writing or saying what you think you're supposed to say. Write this to don't show anybody. Um, this is for you. It's a gut check and you might have to deal with the darkest parts of yourself. Um, that's the way it goes. If you want to be happy, you got to do what matters to you. So that is today's, we talked about circumnavigation. We talked about beliefs. I hope you understand they are a choice. Uh, names versus titles, the long game versus the short game. I hope you decide to play a longer game. Uh, the short game is, is a whole bunch of looking backwards, hoping it means something. And then what, uh, success looks like okay cool so uh steph any questions here i saw um i saw your question about it i'll make sure it's in um defining success it'll be in the module called defining success this little worksheet Any questions? It's open up now. Now we just jam for however long you guys need. Was that helpful? Did that give some perspective, some um, some tools to kind of navigate the uh, the uh, book? I also have, I think, three or four more of these. I'm just doing one one at a time. Um, Have three or four more. When you say we have the liberty to quit the field, isn't it defeatist? Uh, what do you mean by that? Because I have an answer, but I want to make sure I'm answering your question. What do you mean, isn't it defeatist? Like we are giving up. Um, Like, if we take it to the extreme, we can commit suicide. Sure. Um, if your perfect day looks like being buried six feet down under, right? This is all predicated on your perfect day. So, yeah, at the extreme, if you say, hey, my perfect day would be to, like, not be alive, then you could do that. I don't recommend it. But the reality is the idea of, like, you're a quitter is, like, who, well, whose life am I living, you know? So I can see I can see where that comes from. And what that comes from is that it comes from a very goal-oriented place. Um, yeah, bumpers. So if you still think um, having things and impressing other people is important, then it can, it can feel very, very defeatist. I don't think having things and impressing other people is all that important at the expense of my happiness. So walking off the field, I would only walk off the field that don't serve me. I wouldn't walk off the fields that are uh, leading me to life I want to live. Uh, for example, I work very long hours. I work very, very hard. I could walk away at any time, but I don't want to because I'm getting closer to like things that make me happy. So it's just being clear on why you're doing stuff. Um, 
I could see how a medical student quitting, you know, a year away from getting their, uh, from, from graduating, taking the boards could be seen as a quitter by everybody, but they don't have to live his life. He does. So it's, I have no problem with it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Bumpers has helped me feel good about being different, looking at things differently and not caring uh, that my views are not traditional online marketing views anymore. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I think you should do whatever gets you to where you want to be. I don't really... So here's the thing. I'll, I'll give you some, I'll give you a little bit of perspective. Um, I'm putting the workbook in, in the member area now for some reason it didn't save. I'll give you some perspective on, on that. When we talk about like the internet marketing world or academia or, you know, the fish world that Jeff lives in. Um, industries like that have adopted their own set of beliefs and completely forgotten that they were a choice, right? Like you have to do it this way. Like that's just the decision that we made because it worked at a time, but <clears throat> here's the truth about authors. Here's the truth about academics. Here's the truth about doctors and lawyers there is this thing, this culture of belief, which is, it is absolutely the title oriented culture where we're so concerned about keeping up with the Joneses. Never mind that they're lying anyway. We're so concerned with keeping up with the Joneses um, that that consumes us. Doctors, uh, dietitians, nutritionists, trainers, are flopping around, not getting anywhere closer to their goals because they write, they speak, and they live in a way to impress other doctors and lawyers and dietitians, right? So that's the rat race that gets stuck in those, you get stuck in those beliefs by and large when you have a bunch of academics writing things so they get positive reviews from other academics or uh, marketers posting things so that impresses other marketers, unless the objective is to impress other marketers, just get rid of those beliefs. If the objective is to help more people or make more money or whatever, adopt the beliefs that allow you to do that. That's the problem with anything, anytime an industry becomes, uh, develops a paradigm, which means everybody does it a certain way. Uh, they just start doing it to impress one another. Academics, authors, all that crap. Like, hopefully that's helpful. So it's uh, <clears throat> it's a process of saying, what outcome do I want? Um, I want to help a lot of people and I want to make enough money to work 20 hours a week and not stress out. Then you develop the set of beliefs that allows you to do that. Right now, or up to now, you've had a set of beliefs Um that was pushing you to fit in with the current industry. So if that's your goal, cool. But if it's not, step off that fucking field, right? And Manoj, that's what I mean by stepping off the field too. It's often to step onto one that serves you better. Uh, if something is slightly outside of current bumpers, but when considered it feels like it's actually a stepping stone toward making that perfect life a reality, um, does that defeat the purpose? No. Um, so there, there's a, there's a, there's a trade-off. It's called explore exploit. Okay. Um, explore exploit. It's a computer, it's a computer algorithm concept, but there's a trade-off. So if I'm, I'll give you a really quick example. If I'm playing a um, slots at a casino and I find one machine machine that pays out a little bit better than the others, do I exploit that machine or do I go find one that maybe pays out a little bit better? And there's actually a, a mathematical algorithm. And the, the answer is it depends on time. Okay. So if I have five minutes left in the casino, I should exploit the one. It's called a double arm bandit problem. If you want to look it up, uh, 
but I should exploit the one that pays out the best. If I have the next three weeks, it would probably behoove me to go see if I can find another one because I can always come back. Okay, so that's the explore, exploit, trade off. So the way that we watch movies is changing, and Hollywood knows that. So they are exploiting franchises that they already know we like. They're not exploring a lot of new ones. Why? Time. So it's always time bound. Do we explore or exploit? Okay. So now that we're, um, I'll give you one more example. I want to have the, it's my last night in San Francisco. And I want to have the best dinner and the best night with the best people. I'm never coming back. Okay. That's an exploit. It means we should not, this is not the time to go hang out with a whole bunch of new people and hope that you like them and try a new restaurant and hope that you like it. Right. Because the time is short, we exploit, which means we go to the restaurant. We already know that we like with the people we already know that are our favorite. So what that means is if we zoom out and it is time bound. So there, there's a short amount of time. That means this is an appropriate thing to exploit. You can do it outside of your bumpers. You say, Hey, look, um, Facebook is going to explode in three weeks. Like somehow we know Facebook's going to explode in three weeks. If never going on Facebook is one of your bumpers, but you know, if you just buckle down and do it for three weeks, it's going to catapult you forward. It's fine. Exploit it. What we don't want to do is explore outside of our bumpers for some unknown uh, return and for some unknown amount of time so if the, uh, does that make sense? If the time frame and the potential return are pretty clear, you can make the decision. This is outside my bumpers. I'm going to do it for exactly 92 days and then I'm out. You can play outside. It's fine. I do that sometimes. Typically, um, I won't do anything that I'm not willing to do forever. But again, if I knew, uh, if I knew, Facebook groups are going to go away in a week. I might triple down on my Facebook group because there is a very clear timeline on it. So when to explore, when to exploit, it's time bound and it depends on how much you discount the future. Everybody discounts the future differently, uh, but you can, you can use that framework to determine um, is it worth doing something that's outside of my bumpers? And the answer is, if it's a short enough amount of time, yes, it may be. It may not be. I don't know. But we don't explore. We don't do the unknown outside of our bumpers. You go down that rabbit hole for 20 years before you find out what the hell's on the other end. <clears throat> what is the best way to navigate the path we are taking when all of a sudden we had to switch different landscapes? Yep, in person online and uncertain, which is going to serve us best. Um, well, it, it goes back to me. It still goes back to what, what are we optimizing for? You know, um, if it's make as much money as possible, is it help as many people as possible? This is, this is an explore, exploit trade off as well. Um, I am not convinced and some, some people will make a whole bunch of money, uh, by doing the opposite of what I'm suggesting. Most people won't. I am not convinced that now is the time to explore because we don't know how, how aggressive or what it's going to look like. There is going to be an end to this. So the risk is exploring something and then finding something that works and then it stops working when life goes back to quote unquote normal. Uh, we could speculate oh, people are going to still work from home and sit on Zoom. Probably, but that's speculation. There's no, we do not have a preponderance of data that suggests that after a black swan event, people still use Zoom. Um, so you could bet on it. <clears throat> but all that to say, I would, in the short term, get your bumpers up. What are you willing to do? What are you not willing to do? I would look at this as, and it, 
it has a negative connotation. I don't mean it that way. I mean it in a computer sci science language. Um, it's a time to exploit what are the things we already know will work. That's what I would do. So you switch to in-person to online. What do we know will work? Um, because my assumption is you have to make money to pay your bills. And anytime you have to make money to pay your bills and things are uncertain, you do not explore when things are uncertain. You explore when you have something certain. Like for me, I spend most of my time exploring, but I have assets, businesses and stuff uh, that pay all my bills. So I can explore and fail. Exploration will lead to failure 99% of the time. Right? That's why movie industries are not exploring new franchises or new, you know, because most exploration fails. So the way to navigate, in my opinion, is yes, it's uncertain. Yeah, there's a billion different options. What is the most certain thing you can do and get that certain thing? which is probably online um, and I would do minimum viable until things settle down. What you don't want to do necessarily is quadruple down on online, build all the infrastructures and all the systems and everything you need. And then people change their habits back or create a whole new set of habits and you just built an entire infrastructure uh, and you can't keep it full. So bumpers, man, um, I would say learn your bumpers. What are you willing to do? What are you not willing to do? What are the rules for yourself? And uh, within those, do whatever you have to do. And uh, if you're going to do something outside of your bumpers in this particular time, it's okay but you have to have some sort of stop loss so you don't remain outside of your bumpers for five years before you like look up and be like, what the hell am I doing? Right. So it's tough, tough times. The truth is it goes back to like the, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Um, the reality is everybody's trying to hedge their downside now. Everybody's trying to figure out how to be a leader now. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get their bumper set up now. Um, I said this on a live call on, on Thursday night boardroom in Jeff's group uh, on Thursday. The mistake is when things were good, we weren't trying to step into leadership. We weren't hedging our downside. We weren't setting our bumpers which leads to us now scrambling. It's really tough to set bumpers in an unknown, uh, uncertain landscape. So you do the best you can. What's important is on the other side of this, when things start picking up, you keep taking time to re-examine your beliefs, reset your bumpers. We don't do that when things are good because we're just trying to capitalize on all the good. Um, but you have to hedge your downside. So get through this the best you can. <clears throat> and then the second we're on the other side of it, you feel like we're on the other side of it and it's stable. Uh, build a, build a system or a process for continuing to uh, hone in your circumnavigation and your beliefs. Does that make sense? It's tough. I wish I had a better answer. That's one of the, one of the pain points for me is a lot of people are saying, okay, Shit hit the fan. Um, how do I implement all this? And unfortunately, the truth is it should have all been implemented like, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago. And the best we can do is get to the other side so that this kind of uncertainty never happens again to us as individuals. But yeah, man. Um, question came in so would you say if you've been exploring but you know uh, what used to work to go back to that for your bumpers because that is what I've been doing as reference to help me um, yeah well 
there's a whole other framework and it's primarily I use it in a business framework. It's in, it's in like, it's one of the first things I teach my private clients and it's called, it's a bimodal strategy, which means business is all things, all new things are upside and high risk. Everything new, new relationship, uh, new job, new business. We got into it because the upside was appealing or we wouldn't have done it. And it's high risk. We don't have a preponderance of data. Uh, Lyndon, yeah, I have three or four more of these. I don't know the dates yet because I have a private client event next week. Okay. So what we should do is develop a framework. And nobody really does this is we, we start something, we explore something. And it works. And then we need to move it to the other side of the framework. The barbell is what I call it, which is reliable, which means, okay, this works. How do we put it on repeat? How do we systematize it? How do we put people in place? How do we build the bumpers for this thing so it can sit on the other side of the barbell without my attention and continue to provide? Then you have an asset. So any of my companies could be over there. Real estate could be over there, right? It's reliable. I don't have to pay much attention to it. And then I can go explore. The problem is most people never get to the other side. They get about to the middle, which is like having a job, right? It doesn't have as much upside because you're only one person. Um, and it's not reliable without you. So it's a framework of taking a new thing, you explore it and you go, oh, this is awesome. And then you have to be diligent about getting it all the way over to the other side where it's an asset. This is how billionaires invest. They hedge with reliable assets and then they put the extra money on things with upside. They don't, they don't invest in things that have a little bit of risk and a little bit of upside. They just split their aces, right? Most of the money goes into something reliable. The rest goes into something wholly unreliable, but massive upside. And if they lose it all, it doesn't really matter because they have the reliable things. <clears throat> so it's actually, it's an, I mean, it's also, it's also an investment framework. But I look at business the same way. Hey, this works. Now, how can I get it to the other side where it is a reliable asset that I don't have to focus on? And then I explore so in my company, we have what's called an explorer team. That's me and my executive admin. We have a convert team. That's my business partner and my COO. And we have exploit team, which is my operations. I am just out exploring all the time. And when I find something, I go, ooh, this works. Look at this upside. And then I hand it to my uh, convert team, which is my COO, my business partner. And he systematizes it, plugs the people in place, the feedback loops, all that stuff. And then we hand it over to the operations team where it just runs. And I don't have to look at it so I can explore all day long. Right? So that's the explore exploit trade-off. Um, that's how it looks in business. Yep. Network. My, my private client group. It's like 40-something people pay three grand a month. Um, total explore pro play. I had no idea it was going to work. Was not, but I said, Oh, this works. Cool. Let's do an event. We did an event. It went really well. Handed it to the convert team. Now the operations team, I still show up and, and do all the talking, but they set up the events. They send all the emails. They set up all those. So, um, hopefully that makes sense. There's frameworks for all of this stuff. A lot of it's preference based, but that's how you maintain upside and mitigate uh, downside. You maintain the upside by having the freedom to explore and you mitigate downside by turning validated things into reliable assets. Again, most people never get there. They find, they validate a thing and then they turn it into their job and that's it, which is why I built the company's the way I did. My uh, mastery mode is literally the uh, uh, reliable side. Anything I do, I just hand it to mastery mode. They systematize it and all that stuff. 
So I'll, I'll let you guys know the schedule. This replay will be up uh, sometime today or tomorrow. Uh, it'll be up in uh, Defining Success in the Bumpers Accelerator. So that's the um, – Jeff said explore cannot be forced. Uh, I'm going to jam on that for a second because it goes with circumnavigation as well. Um, explore – the explore process is a process of failing. Uh, you could try to force it, but it's really frustrating. So the explore process is a process of failing. It is an exploration because it's unknown. Unknown things have unknown consequences. Okay. So it makes the most sense because there are people, Jeff and I explore naturally. There are people that do not explore naturally and they try to force it. And then they fail a bunch, so they're forcing it, and they're failing, and it's really frustrating. So it makes the most sense to drop, step off the field of beliefs that your industry has. You should only explore the things that interest you intensely because that curiosity and interest will carry you through the failure like it is no big deal. Uh, one thing I get all the time is like people want to, know how I figure things out and, and like why I just like I fuck up all the time and I, it doesn't bother me because I'm not doing it to be good at it. I'm doing it because I'm really curious. Everything I do is because I'm really curious about what happens when I do it. So to everybody else, it might be a failure. To me, it's a win because I found out what happens. So explore should be whatever you are intensely interested in. And now that you know, you understand the circumnavigation, you can't be, you won't be discouraged by failing. You're just circumnavigating to figure out what happens. What happens if I rotate this way? Ooh, all right. Well, that was painful. What happens if I rotate this way? Like, ooh, that wasn't pleasant either. What happens? That's all it is. And you find some cool stuff, and then you have to just have to have to process or mechanism. You say, oh, this is cool. Now let me take you through the process of putting it on autopilot. So, uh, bumpers, accelerator, buyers, you'll have this in your, uh, in your uh, member area. If it was useful, if it was helpful, uh, go ahead and, uh, and encourage people to buy the book. Uh, NickPetersonBook.com will be on Amazon. Uh, BumpersBook.com will go straight to our funnel. Don't really care which one. It's all the same to me. Uh, and we'll do, uh, I'll tell you before we go. I'll tell you what the next one. I don't know when it will be, but I'll tell you what it will be. Let me look at my outline. So this one was a, a deep dive into success, and I wanted to highlight. Just understand that success is what you what you decide it is, and so we say that sometimes, but we're still operating with the beliefs that don't serve us. Okay. Uh, next, we'll talk about. The next one will really be about rolling average expectation management how to actually measure things, right? Because nothing happens in a straight line. So uh, it's really about, it's not about hitting a record month every month. It's about your, this peak being higher than your last peak and or this valley being higher than your last valley. So you could have the same peak. Let's say your best month is $50,000 and you never ever can crack that. But you go fifty thousand dollars, ten, fifty thousand dollars, twelve, fifty thousand dollars, fifteen, fifty thousand dollars, twenty-four. Right? What we've done is we've raised the valleys, and you have way, way, way more money in your bank account. Your average monthly revenue has gone up significantly, and it's far easier to raise the floor than it is to raise the ceiling because by definition, the ceiling is actually the best you can do as by the evidence that it's your ceiling, right? But we're going to talk about that because oftentimes people are pushing for higher highs and even if they reach higher highs, it leads to lower lows, deeper valleys, more burnout, and their rolling average stays the same or gets worse. So a lot of internet marketers, a lot of yo-yo dieters keep celebrating. 
ooh, I lost 30 pounds, which is awesome because my last diet, I only lost 15. Um, but like they're the same average weight. A lot of internet marketers are like, oh, new record month. And uh, unfortunately, I'm inside of a lot of their companies. They're like, new record month, but they have less money in their bank accounts than they did before. So we're going to talk about rolling average and like how do you actually improve over time versus a whole bunch of, you know, snapshots of peaks. So that's the next one. That'll be fun. You guys are awesome. Again, if this was useful, drop in the group, shoot a tag. Um, Celebrate it. I'd love to get more people just kind of embracing the methodology and, and just being happy and getting where they want to be. So let me know if you have any questions and uh, I'll hit you guys next time.